Good afternoon, everyone. This is Dawn McCaw from the Career Resource Center, and I'm here with another episode of Arch Chat. And today we are very fortunate to have an alum on. I'm just going to give a few people a chance to jump on. I'm going to wave to a few people. Thanks so much for joining us. I look forward to this every time. Okay. So our guest today is Kevin Burns, and Kevin was a is it 2019 grad, I believe. Yes, 2019 grad, and he actually has a BA in communications with public relations concentration, but he had minors in graphic design and theater arts, so that's the... Um, the crossover. And he now is the, get the whole title correct, he is a social communications manager at Lincoln Center for Performing Arts. So I'm going to bring him on. Thanks for joining everyone. It's Don McCaw with our episode of Arch Chat today. Here he comes. And again, thanks for joining us. Today's guest is Kevin Burns. Hey. Hello. Thanks for joining. I'm so excited to be here. All right. So, Kevin, you've been such a, a great alum. I think I've interviewed you on our um, other IG series maybe two years ago. Um, 20 in September. 2020. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't mean to make that face. <laughs> and you were just um, recently on our Thrive panel uh, to talk about positions in the arts with students along with uh, other panelists and other college. So um, thank you for that. And I guess we'll just start out by having you introduce yourself and starting to tell us about your current position, some other uh, experiences you've had, and also what you were involved in, you were very involved when you were at New Paltz, and um, I'll, I'll, you know, say some of this again, but in particular, some of your skills that you gained along the way since you're in an administrative position. Yeah, thank you for that um, lovely introduction. Um, I, should, I should record that. Um, <laughs> um, I, I was super involved at New Paltz. I am completely obsessed with New Paltz. I think it's the best place on earth. Um, I had so, so many um, amazing experiences um, on campus and so many amazing connections with so many great professionals and professors um, and bosses. Um, but I guess I'll, I'll start and like get, I'll start early and get to my uh, job now. But at New Paltz, um, I did a lot. I was a orientation leader, a tour guide um, or student ambassador. Um, <laughs> I think my old boss would prefer I said student ambassador. Um, and I was also an RA. So those were helpful in just um, learning like what a proper like team um, looks like and how to like work within a team. Um, I think the, those skills are so transferable to any job. Like everyone I know that has had like one of those student leader type jobs um, has been able to like use that to their advantage in any field. So um, I definitely really enjoyed those experiences. But as far as um, more uh, related jobs go, my um, first ever internship is like a really, I think of like a, as a really beautiful like New Pulse story. Um, I, the summer going into my um, junior year, I really wanted this internship at uh, New Victory and New 42nd Street. Um, it's like this theater um, company that has all the rehearsal studios for Broadway shows. Um, and they also have New Victory Theater, which is like a young children's theater. And I ended up um, not landing it the first time I interviewed. And then I came back to campus um, for junior year. And I was like, I feel like if I want to get this internship next year, I have to get um, something a little uh, more attainable first to use that to get um, to that dream internship. So 
um, I ended up email reaching out to Russ Thompson, who um, runs the he ru used to run the marketing for the Fine and Performing Arts Department. Now um, it's Lindsay Lennon. Uh, both of them are are amazing. I'm, I I really learned so much from both of them. Um, but I just reached out to him and I was like, hi, I'm really interested in working in arts admin. Um, here's my resume. Is there any way I could work for you for free? Um, and he actually called me into his office and we like chatted for a little bit. I guess, I guess we could call it an interview, but it, it didn't even like really feel like an interview. Um, but not only did he offer me a marketing assistant role, it, he also offered me a paid one or not also it, it, like it was paid. So some something to take away from that for sure is that there are opportunities to pave your own path if if um if you don't get the yes that you were hoping for um and thanks to that job and i and i had that for like three or four semesters like i held that till the end of my uh, time at new pop so that was nice because usually internships are much shorter um but that helped me to land the new victory um job the next summer um so without without that um i don't think i would have ever gotten that new victory apprentice job um and that was uh the summer between my the summer of 2018 like between uh junior and senior year um and there i wrote a lot of social posts i did some press stuff um and i also did some graphic design uh, worked there too. Also, um, I started New Pulse as a graphic design major and then um, sophomore year moved into um, comms and PR. And I, I always had the theater minor, but that's where the graphic design minor comes from because I started um, as a graphic design major. But um, and then after graduation, I for a short period of time, actually, I knew I wanted to work in the arts, but um, it's very competitive. Uh, it's very hard to make yourself stand out. So my first job out of college, um, I was an intern at a construction company, um, which was very, very um, unexpected, but um, still cool, still transferable skills to um, where I went next. And then I worked at Autism Speaks, uh, which is a um, autism advocacy nonprofit for two years. Um, I did, I ran the socials for them. Um, and I also did a lot of graphic design work for them. Um, and that's where I learned a lot about fundraising um, and fundraising online, which um, for a lot of arts organizations, they're nonprofits. So um, the nonprofit aspect um, and uh, nonprofit work and the arts like really go um, hand in hand. So having a knowledge of like, how that industry works in any way, even if it's not necessarily an arts nonprofit, um, is something that can totally be transferable um, if you wanted to work uh, behind the scenes, um, because it's all um, it all can't happen without those aspects. Um, and in November, I just landed my dream job um, at Lincoln Center. Um, link, which is, as you said, the social communications manager. So um, I do a lot of the social media work. I do some graphic design as well. Feel free to follow us on social media at Lincoln Center. Um, and I also do some live event coverage um, too. We're actually opening our spring season uh, next week. Uh, so if anybody is in the New York City area, um, definitely head on by, but that's a little um, summary of my kind of work experience and how I got to where I am. Thank you so much. I wanted to say a few things. You said so many great uh, <laughs> things in there. One thing I wanted to, no, no, one thing I just wanted to um, stress or bring up again is how you had an interview on campus um, that was not really an interview, more like a conversation, as you said. But yeah, it is an interview. So anytime you speak with an employer or a potential employer, it can be very casual, but you want to keep in mind that you're still kind of selling yourself or, you know, that's that's the impression they're getting. So a lot of times people prep for kind of a formal type interview and it's more conversational. 
but it's still an interview. So yeah, that's great. Also, I just, you know, you were very strategic. You saw um, positions that you wanted and thought, what can I, how do I get this experience so that I can be a good candidate? So then you sought out the social media position with um, Lindsay and, you know, that there are opportunities like we had our job fair this week. There's social media is everywhere in every organization and picking up those transferable skills is, is amazing. And, you know, I love that you went to autism speaks because people might not think of that as kind of a step. It got you to your dream job, but also, you know, because jobs aren't, um, so separated, like majors seem to be kind of separated, although there's overlap and, but then when you work, everything kind of combines. So um, yeah, there's just so many things that I thought were great. Um, and then you landed your job at New Victory, which, which is great. So it's all like a stepping stone. Like then you build your experience and your skills and then the next place you go, because had you not had that great experience everywhere, Lincoln Center may have not thought you were kind of ready for them, even though we know you, you're ready. <laughs> I think when you were on <laughs> campus, anywhere I would go, you were in a different role. <laughs> Just be like, hi, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. It was like you worked here as, you know, a professional before you worked out in the world, which is great. I still feel like you're here and one of us, but that's the good thing about being an alum. Makes my heart happy. Forever blue and orange. <laughs> oh, I should have worn blue and orange today. I have lots of colors on. Are you on the orange and blue network? Good, good. Because sometimes, you know, students will watch this and then wonder how to reach out to you. So is that okay when they reach out to you on orange and blue sure. network? I could put my LinkedIn um, in the chat also, if that would be helpful. Okay. Yeah. Um, perfect. All right, so let me just see if there's anything else. But I think that when I meet with art students and go into some classes, that getting some of those transferable, um, like office skills, um, social media, any marketing, you talked about fundraising, uh, all those things that you can get from internships. It's not, you know, painting or drawing or medals or anything with the actual skills in the art, graphic design, of course, is for graphic design, but all those transferable skills, that's what employers are looking for. And um, there's a lot of jobs in arts admin, which is what you are in actually now. The other thing that I have found in speaking with alumni and just, you know, people at different arts organizations is you have your job, say at Lincoln Center, and then there's so many events going on and you're you're working within a community of artists so your uh free time is also overlaps with your work because you actually want to go to the different events put on by your work so it's a really nice way to combine your love of the arts um, i i'm like so excited to i haven't gotten to go to too many uh things yet but i i have seen a few shows at my job, but um, once the spring season comes up, I'm going to be there um, a lot more. So I'm super excited to be doing that. And that's totally a perk to working in the industry is um, lots of free shows <laughs> or, or discounted tickets and things like that. So definitely seeing a lot more um, shows than I have been before. And I've been to Lincoln Center, well, in my lifetime for shows, but um, I was there a few years back and we had a panel of, um, you know, events coordinators and everybody kind of behind the scenes. And some of those actually were artists on the side. Like one of them was in a band. Um, one of them gave like music lessons. And so, you know, I thought that it was interesting that this is a way to be in the arts and you can also you're doing some administrative work or you and then you might be doing some other art as an artist on the side but um so so you can always fold different things in yeah, I have a lot of co-workers who I, who identify as artists 
Um, I, I do a lot of theater. I haven't, I haven't done it in a few years thanks to the pandemic, but um, it's nice to be in an environment where um, people are, um, people are still doing their jobs, but everybody identifies as an artist or not everybody, but a lot of people do, or, or at least have an interest in the art. So it's nice to be around that. Um, and some of, some of my coworkers are also like working artists on the side. Like um, one of my, one of the, one of my coworkers on, our, on my press team um, was actually in the West Side Story movie that just came out. She was a, a dancer in it. Um, so you can, you can see her, um, shout out to Christina if she's on, if she's on this, but, um, I don't, I'm not sure if she is, but, um, she, there, there are a lot of artists there. Yeah. Um, so what, what's her job? She works in press. I don't know. Oh, I don't know mm -hmm. her exact title, but she's, she's, um, part-time. So, um, she'll, and that's a, I've, I find part-time roles, um, are, up a lot for arts um, organizations, which can be very helpful, especially if you're someone who identifies in, as an artist or a performer and wants to be doing that, but also wants something that's a little more stable. Um, those are, I feel like particularly in the arts world, like um, more common than I would say in other industries, at least, at least in my experience look, looking for jobs. So that's um, something to keep an eye out for if you're looking to kind of have that balance. I just wanted to bring up, because I, I know in a previous conversation, uh, we had talked about that there are internships available at Lincoln Center. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know when they, when the new session of interns starts again. I, I believe it's over the summer, but I don't want to, um, over the, that's over the summer with an asterisk, but we hire about 30 interns um, every year. So there, there are a lot of um, opportunities um, to intern at Lincoln Center if that's something that you're interested in. Um, happy to answer any questions if anybody wants to reach out on uh, LinkedIn or on the alumni network. Um, if you have any questions before the interview um, or just wanted to pick my brain, I'm always happy to do that. Great. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um... Let's see, I'm just trying to make sure I cover things so I don't get off and I'm like, oh. One thing I do want to say, and I usually um, don't advertise for things, but today, <laughs> March 4th, is the deadline for students <laughs> to apply for any summer camp jobs. And there's a lot of arts counselor positions open and there's Bucks Rock Camp and that's for really high quality, fine arts, um, that as a counselor, it's, it's a well-known camp, arts camp. So we have arts camps in addition to regular camps, but they're looking for art, art, you know, fine art, theater, music. So if you have questions about that, look at your CRC weekly update from last Monday, but also you can reach out to me at macawd at newpulse.edu. And let's get you in that resume book. The deadline is midnight tonight. My, um, technically, I, I don't call it my first internship because I, I feel like I was a camp counselor, but like on, on paper as an internship, but I um, worked at an, a, a theater camp, like a musical theater camp um, at Malloy College at their theater, like the summer in between college and high school. Um, and I, I had a blast, it was so fun. Um, it didn't feel like working. Um, and that, that type of job is super, super great to, to get you to that next role. Um, like, it's a great, like, stepping stone for sure. I think it's something nice. that stands out for everyone that knows you and has known you at New Paltz and probably everywhere is that you really took advantage of so many opportunities to get involved. And so people... I think who knew you knew you would be successful in getting something that you liked. And I wanted to share that because it's kudos to you, but just that that's, you know, you made it happen. Things didn't fall in your lap. You went out there and made it happen. And I think that's, that's critical. Sometimes things fall in your lap, but you were pretty intentional about it and took responsibility that, you know, you were making kind of your own future in that way. 
So I think that's great to share with students in general. Yeah. I wish I had done more of that. I'm happy where I am now, but <laughs> I, it's very strategic and sometimes people don't think that way. I think I realized, I think I came to the realization that I might have to like, w like work a little harder or kind of find ways to carve that path. Like when I was when, like that first um, summer that I was trying to get that new victory internship and a, and a few other ones. Um, and I really was like, I, I need to get something else on my resume if I want to get the place that I'm going to go and I'm not going to get it by applying because um, it didn't land me a job. <laughs> um, so that's why I, that's why I started um, like brainstorming, like, and came up with reaching out to uh, fine and performing arts. Um, and I'm, I'm sure there's many ways to do that on campus, even if it's just reaching out to a professor and asking, like, is there anything you're working on? Like, can I, can I do, can I do something for you to get this on your resume? And there's also so many job opportunities on campus, like, and like in all types of fields, like, um, I, I'm so happy that I got uh, to take advantage of those. So I always encourage people to do the same. Are you, just a question, are you working remotely? Yeah. Yeah. I go in, I go into events or, and like um, every once in a while go into the office. Um, but for the most part, it's remote. Like right now I'm, I'm in my apartment. And do you think that that was a change that happened more during COVID for like your coworkers or did it used to be mostly in person and now it's like shifted a little bit? It was in person before. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So this is, this is definitely different. Um, but there are, there are pros and cons. Um, like I definitely don't mind waking up at 8.45 um, for starting work at nine o'clock. Um, but I do miss the in-person aspect for sure. Yeah, yeah. And you're pretty extroverted, so I could see that. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's different in person. Um, I enjoy it in person too, but I do understand the that you can get up and get ready and be in your seat to work. It's easier when you're remote. Because <laughs> I'm not a morning person. Yeah, I'm not a morning person. Um, <laughs> but I do, I do prefer the in-person than, you know, meeting with students. It's, it's great to be in person. But it's good to see the flexibility with workspaces because I think that's what some people are looking for. And that seems to be the trend. So. I, I, I think it makes it more accessible because I I have a lot of friends who like because when we when I graduated college it was right like before the pandemic so I had a lot of like I was privileged in that I lived on Long Island um, so I was able to apply to roles in New York City where a lot of these jobs are um, and people who didn't live in that proximity basically like could only work in so many roles if they could afford to move out of their parents house so um i think it kind of like takes it really even to playing field in some ways that mm -hmm. you can work remotely because that barrier i know a lot of college stu students like going out of college have that problem um so i don't know where i was going with that but i think i think it's a nice way no, it's to more, yeah it's more accessible and definitely field. because sometimes like the salary when you're starting out doesn't um, is not level to the housing expenses, living expenses. So, so yeah, that is great. And I noticed during the pandemic that there were so many remote internships. So students could do a remote internship that in person would be in San Francisco. Yeah. But they wouldn't have to go there. So that, that's been a positive look for the silver linings in COVID. <laughs> Always half full. Um, yeah. If you, if you can, find what's in what's in the glass yes definitely well I want to thank you is there anything else you wanted to wrap up with you've given us so many gems I did, I did like jot down a few like tips that I <laughs> um I thought I might share mm -hmm. um one of them is I uh, I always think it's great to or maybe this isn't even a tip but um I think it's so important to look up the people that you're interviewing with beforehand 
Mm-hmm. Um, I am like, especially working in social media, I know how to really, I know how to find people. <laughs> um, but you really, um, I, I always look at interviews as like, if someone's taking the time to interview you, like from your resume, they must at least think you can do the, the job. Now they're interviewing you. I mean, there, there's also aspects of the interview that are like making sure you're doing the job, but um, there's totally an element of it that is like, do I want to be with this person for 40 hours a week? Um, so I always look for any sort of similarity that, or s- similar interests, similar identities that, um, I can find a way to identify. Um, and I think that was helpful to getting all of the, um, jobs that I've had. Um, or maybe, maybe it wasn't, but I'll, I'll never truly know, but, um, and then another oh, thing that you I can do that on career shift. You can find people at companies on Career Shift. So just go to the Career Resource Center website and you have access to that as an alum. Oh, oh. another tool. Now you can find more and yeah. you can see anything that's been publicly posted by the person. So if they're, you know, interested or in an organization or if they've published any articles, you can look at that and find affiliations. Oh, good to know. Um, um, I have two more. Um, okay. Another one I would I like to do. I just also I started Lincoln Center in November, so I'm like kind of fresh off of, or not that fresh, but um, off of going through the interview process. Um, and something that I really found helpful when I was interviewing, especially on Zoom, because you can like you can have anything you want in front of you, they they won't know. Um, so I would I would pick like what are the top five things that I need to get into this interview and have them um, listed in front of me. And um, whatever questions you get asked, um, like there are, you can totally like answer the question and find a way to like weave it in, but um, make sure that you're not leaving the interview without them getting that information because sometimes the questions won't prompt you to give them the information that they need to know that shows that you're amazing. For what the you're job. saying now is verbatim what I say. So it's so great. Oh, awesome. So great to hear because you just went through it. And yeah, don't let those highlight stories not get out there. Mm-hmm. It's so true. You can just weave them in. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I, um, I found that super helpful. And then my last one is i don't i feel like this could i this has gotten me my last two jobs but um like just making sure that you're coming prepared to job interviews um mm-hmm. something specific that i did for my lincoln center job and for my autism speaks job was um they asked me to like look over the social media accounts beforehand um and i i think i've told you've heard me talk about this but um I wrote like a typed four page SWOT analysis of both of their social medias. Um, And for Autism Speaks, I printed it out and brought it in. Um, But I just shared the doc um, over Zoom for the Lincoln Center one. But um, I can't tell you how many times I've heard from people that like they've gone on an interview for social media or they've interviewed some or they've not gone on, they've interviewed someone for social media and the person hadn't looked at their socials before the interview. Um, So like, make sure you do your research. And if there doesn't necessarily have to be um, a four page typed SWOT analysis, but um, any like anything that you can bring to the table, like if you're someone who's looking to work in set design and you know what show you're interviewing for, come with some ideas, come with some sketches. Like um, however, however that, that version of the SWOT analysis can apply to what you do um, like can really make a difference because that's something that like anyone who wasn't in the interview that might have a say in who gets hired there that might get passed around to a lot more people and a lot more people might know your name and get excited about you. Um, And it also can just be an example of your um, work and your work ethic. Absolutely. That's great. I'll yeah, you know people. You know people that day who were interviewing you were talking about it at the water cooler. If we even talk about things at the water cooler anymore, I hope the so. virtual water cooler. They're like, <laughs> did you do that SWOT analysis? <laughs> um, yeah, you I'll... were not the only person interviewing for that job, so yeah, you stuck we'll out. Have to, 
and and at, at the end of the day, there's like they that you have to give them a reason that you're that like to pick you over um, everyone else. Like you you have to literally be the best option. Um, at least in in like these type of jobs, like other other fields, there's like many people who do the same role. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so anything you can do to stand out. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm happy to, you. to be here. Alrighty. Well, this is wrapping up this session. And join me again on our Friday's Arch Chat. Thanks so much, Kevin. Have a great weekend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.